Hi, I'm Rich Nass. I'm the director of content for E-Times and the Event Systems Conference. And I'm here with Dr. Kaku, who was the keynote address speaker for the Event Systems Conference in April out in San Jose. Dr. Kaku, it's an honor and a privilege to be here with you in your classroom. We're in one of the, one of the planetariums at City College in New York City. Okay. So Dr. Kaku, what direction do you think you, sh you should take a talk where you're addressing the people who are creating technologies in the future? I'll be talking about the next 10 to 20 years of the future. I'm a physicist. We're the ones who invented the laser. We invented the transistor. We helped to build the first electronic computer. We helped to create the internet. We wrote the World Wide Web. And now we physicists are inventing the next 10, 20 years into the future. And it's going to be a little bit like Star Trek. Think about Star Trek. When you take chips and you put them into a typewriter, it becomes a word processor, a spreadsheet device. When you take a chip and put it into a telephone, it becomes a mobile phone, just like in Star Trek. However, now hold on to your hats, because now we're going to be placing the chip in places that we don't even think about. I'll be talking, first of all, about the smart bathroom. What happens when you have a tricorder? <laughs> a tricorder, a device, a handheld device that you can scan people's bodies, immediately find out what's wrong with people. Also, your glasses. What about the future of glasses? Also, what happens when ships and matter itself become intelligent? First of all, your bathroom. On Star Trek, we have the tricorder, a device that can scan anything, look inside your body, look for anything. Right now, an MRI scan can be reduced down to about the size of a large purse. That's the size of an MRI scanner using what are called non-uniform magnetic fields. We're going to get it down to the size of a cigarette case, the size of a cell phone. This means that you'll be able to do your own MRI scanning, just like in Star Trek. Also, your mirror will be intelligent. You'll blow on it. The condensation will be analyzed for P53, which is involved in 50% of all common cancers, and your mirror will tell you if you have lung cancer or not. Also, your toilet will be intelligent. It'll pick up proteins, not from a cancer tumor, which has 10 billion cells, but a cancer colony of 100 cells. In other words, the word tumor may disappear from the English language. Just like the word computer will also disappear from the English language because of your smart toilet. Also, your glasses will become intelligent, plus maybe your contact lenses as well. This means that when you talk to somebody, you'll see not only their entire biography, not only the identification of who they are, but also whether or not they're lying, perhaps, their entire background, and also if they're speaking in a different language, a universal translator. Already we can go from Chinese to English and back pretty rapidly, and you'll be able to do this via your contact lenses. And also remember the holodeck on Star Trek? where you walk into a room and images form in, in any shape you can imagine. You'll have that in your contact lenses. If you were an architect, for example, you'll walk into an empty room and your contact lenses will show you the entire design of the building you're, or you're working on and you'll be able to move objects and live in a virtual slash real world. Not only that, but now going maybe 20, 30 years into the future, we may have what is called programmable matter. What happens when chips become the size of millimeter glass spheres with electric charges that can be rearranged? This means that in principle, for Christmas, instead of getting presents at the store, you'll download software for Christmas, you'll press a button, and all your toys will rearrange from last year into the hottest thing next year. Or, if you can work out some of the bugs in this programmable matter, think of an entire city. An entire city made out of these tiny little millimeter glass spheres. You push a button and there's your city. If you don't like the buildings, you press it again and it rearranges someplace else. And remember that movie, Terminator 2, with a T-1000 robot mm -hmm. made out of liquid metal? People used to say, ha, give me a break. You're not going to have a T-1000 robot. Well, we're going to get pretty close to that in the coming decades. Now, I should also point out the bad news as well. Moore's Law, the engine that has driven much of the prosperity you see around us, will gradually start to sputter around 2020, 2025, and all things must pass. That's why we physicists are now working on the successor to silicon power. The age of silicon will gradually end. Silicon Valley could become a rust belt unless we physicists think of the next generation, which could be quantum computers, quantum dot computers, 
optical computers, DNA computers, protein computers, molecular computers, we're working on it. What excites me very much about what you just said, you, you said we very often in the discussion. We are the people who are at the Embedded Systems Conference. We is they, and they is we is us, and that's exciting. And another thing, this is also going to affect the nature of the economy itself. People ask the question, well, what can you do for me? What, can you, what have you done for me lately? And the answer is everything. We technicians have created the architecture of the 20th century. We're now building the architecture of the 21st century. And this is also going to affect the job market. It's also going to affect value, what is going to be expensive, what is not going to be expensive. We're making the transition from commodity-based capital to intellectual capital. This means that if you have commodities like iron, coal, steel, things like that, commodity prices have been dropping on average for 150 years. But software, but hardware, things that are intelligent, and also creative like Hollywood movies, websites, artistic things that make our, our world enjoyable, those are the things that are gonna be worth a lot more than commodities. So what comes out of this conference will also affect not just the gadgets you get for Christmas. It's going to affect what you do for a living. It's going to affect the economy itself. Because we are making the transition now to intellectual capital. And the good news is, the people in this audience are among the winners. The winners, because they are the forefront of intellectual capital, which will be the foundation of the future. I can hardly wait till April. Thank you very much, Dr.